Hi, and welcome back to another video in our Unify Network Easy Setup Series for 2024. And in this video, we're going to be setting up firewall rules. So if you want to know how to set up firewall rules, keep watching this video and I'll show you how. Here we are. And what I've done is logged into my Unify Network controller and clicked on Unify Network and then selected the settings icon which is the gear or the cog icon at the bottom left side here. And then what I've done from the sub menu here is selected security. So I'm in the security menu and we're at the general tab at the moment. Now going forward, um, just before we do carry on to let you know that this video is based on Unify Network version 8.3.32 and it's the latest official public release version at the time of recording this video which is the 27th of July 2024. So to create our firewall rules what we're going to do first is go into profiles so select profiles and then once you're in the profile screen here you need to select IP groups. Now as you can see this has already taken us into IP groups and what we're going to do here is we're going to create an IP group for the RFC 1918 official network address ranges. What the RFC 1918 IP address ranges are are for private use only so they are defined by the authorities that the RFC 1918 IP address ranges are 192.168.0.0 forward slash 16 and 172.16.0.0 forward slash 12 and the final one 10.0.0.0 forward slash 8. Now these are defined only for private use and not for public use so they cannot be used for servers and things on the internet hopefully that makes sense but there are plenty of articles on the internet that you can search on rfc 1918 which will help give you more in-depth information i don't want to go in depth into this video because we're basically doing firewall rules but we need to set up this ip group first for RFC 19 before we can set up the firewall rules and all will be revealed later on. So to do this what we need to do is click create new in the profile name call this RFC 1918 in the type it is going to be an IPv4 address stroke subnet then for the IPv4 address box type in 192 168.0.0 forward slash 16 and then click add then in the address box again type in 172.16.0.0 forward slash 12 so that should be 172.16.0.0 forward slash 12 then click add then for the third one and final one type in in the address 10.0.0.0 forward slash 8 and click add then once you've got those three addresses in there exactly as I've typed in here you can then click the add button at the bottom of the screen and that completes setting up the RFC 1918 IP address group so now what we can do now that we've done that is create the firewall rules so to do this click on security then select traffic and firewall rules at the tab at the top this will then take you in to the firewalls and you'll probably get taken into simple so if you do get taken into this simple tab here just click on advanced then once you're in the advanced tab you'll see a whole list of firewall rules already created by the Unify network controller by default. You may see more or fewer firewall rules in the list 
to what I have but if you do don't worry about that um, yours may have more or fewer firewall rules in the list but that's fine we'll just continue on so what we need to do is scroll down the list and then what we're going to do is click on create entry so click create entry then from the entry screen the first firewall rule that we're creating is a rule type and it must be advanced so it should be advanced by default and for the type you need to change this from internet in to LAN in so select LAN in in the name we're going to be typing in allow established and related traffic now I'm not going to go into details of what these rules do specifically but you do need to create all of these rules to have the firewall rules to work properly so do create all of these rules please so give it a name of allow established and related traffic then under the action it needs to be selected as accept which it is by default and then for the protocol leave that as all and also make sure that before predefined is ticked and for the source section for source type it should be port IP group address group should be any port group should be any MAC address should be left blank then for destination you need destination type as port IP group address group should be any again port group should be any then for advanced select the manual option and then under match state make sure that you tick established and related so tick established related then for match IP sec that should be do not match logging can be unticked so once you've done that click add rule so that's our first firewall rule created so for the second firewall rule we click create entry again so for this rule we should have the rule type as advanced type should be LAN in and in the name we want to type allow default so this is allowing the default network so do allow default LAN to access all VLANs so what this is doing is allowing any device in the default network to access our VLANs which is what we want to allow our devices in the VLANs to be controlled and managed from the default network into our VLANs so under action it should be accept protocol should be all and make sure that before predefined is ticked for the source type we need to select network and in the network name select default so for source type is network network here is default network type is IPv4 subnet which is already selected MAC address should be left blank and then for the destination it should be port IP group and for the address group should be RFC 1918 so hopefully that makes sense why we created that port IP group earlier called RFC 1918 so this is what we're using it for and then for the port group it should be selected as any and then for advanced you can leave that as auto so once you've done that click add rule for the third rule we'll click on create entry again then under the rule type it's always advanced type is LAN in and for the name we're going to type in allow now just before we continue this rule what we're doing in this firewall rule is allowing one of our VLANs to access for example our NAS device or our Philips Hue device or for example home assistant so what it's doing is allowing devices in any selected VLAN that we're selecting this rule to access our NAS Philips Hue device or home assistant for example on our other VLAN network so it's creating a specific rule just to allow this so in this example what we'll do 
is allow a multimedia VLAN to access NAS. So our NAS will be sitting on our default network, but what this will do is allow devices in our multimedia network to access our NAS. For example, our smart TV wants to access the multimedia stored on our NAS. So this rule is going to be allowing that. Now you can change this rule to whichever devices and VLAN you like. So just configure the rule however you like. But I'll point out when we go along creating this rule which options you need to change. So obviously the first one is the name. So you'd give it the name of whichever VLAN and whichever device you'd be accessing and from and to. So under action, it's always accept. So that should be accept. Protocol should be all. Before predefined should be ticked. So for our source, the source type should be network. So select network from the drop down list. Then for network, you want to select the network that you want to access the device from. So in this case, it would be multimedia because we're allowing our multimedia devices in this multimedia VLAN to access the NAS. So we'll select where it's coming from. So this is the multimedia VLAN. And then for the network type, would be IPv4 subnet, so leave that as it is. MAC address should be left blank. And then for the destination, we want to select the destination type to be IP address. Now, under the address, what you need to do is type in the IP address of your device that you want to access. So in this case, the IP address of my Synology NAS is 192.168.1.5 so what you need to do is give your device a static IP address which is advisable so allocate a static IP address to your device for example this will be the NAS so it already has a static IP address allocated to it so what you need to do in the address is type in the IP address of the device that you want to allow access to so hopefully that makes sense. Under the port, you can leave that port blank. Then for advanced, you can leave that as auto. And then once you finish, click add rule. Then for our fourth rule, what we're going to do is create a new rule by clicking create entry again. Make sure the rule type is advanced. Type should be LAN in. And the name is block enter hyphen vlan routing or routing whichever you like to call it under action it will be drop protocol should be all and make sure that before predefined is ticked source is port ip group address group is any port group any and for the destination it is port group and then for the address group click and select RFC 1918. Then for the port group, this should be set as any, which it already is by default, as you can see. Then for advanced, leave that as auto. Now, before we click add rule, what this rule is doing is blocking all other devices from accessing one VLAN to another VLAN. So it stops devices in one VLAN accessing other VLANs and networks apart from the rule that we just created to allow specific access to the NAS. So that rule will be superseded by this one. So this one will block anything else accessing other devices in other VLANs. So hopefully that makes sense. So once you've got the information as it is on the screen at the moment, click on add rule at the bottom here. So this completes setting up of all the firewall rules. And as you can see, of course, we're now back at the uh, list of firewall rules. So to clarify, you should have allow established and related traffic 
allow default LAN to access all VLANs, allow multimedia VLAN to access NAS, and then the fourth rule is block into VLAN routing or routing, whichever you like to call it. So of course there should be four rules, but if you want to allow access to a specific device, so an additional specific device I mean, say for example you want to allow your multimedia VLAN to access say your home assistant, then you would have another rule in there which you create in the same way as you've done with allow multimedia VLAN to access NAS. Of course you would select the relevant VLAN that you want to access from and then of course the IP address of the device that you want to access on another network. So just to make sure, make sure that you have a static IP address for the device that you want to be accessing as I have already with my NAS. So it already has a static IP address. So the best way to do this is so just go into whichever device you want and give it a static IP address. So for example, you would log into your QNAP NAS or your Synology NAS control panel, go into the network settings and allocate a static IP address there. That's the best way to do it, I find. So um, that completes this video and hope you found this video useful. And just one final thing, you will be able to access the login page for the Unify Network Controller from any of your VLANs. So you will still be able to get to the login page for your Unify Network Controller. However, you won't be able to log in because you don't have a username and password, of course. So hopefully that clears things up. So again, hope you like this video. Hope you found it useful. Keep a lookout as more videos are coming soon. Thanks for watching. Look after yourselves. Uh, bye for now.